Well, good morning, church. It is so wonderful to be with you all on this beautiful day that the Lord has made of December 13th. Uh, we are just 12 days away from Christmas. And here I am live at Christmas City, USA at the Legacy International Center. Just a beautiful place that I'd encourage you to come and check out during the weekends to see what's happening here for you and your family and your loved ones. And again, I am so thankful that no matter what comes our way, no matter what we deal with in this thing called life, nothing can cancel Christmas. And today, I wanna to talk to you about worship and singing will never be canceled out before Christmas. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, why aren't we worshiping the Lord at the beginning of our, our online services? Because we're gonna be doing worship afterwards. And uh, I'm so thankful for Britt and our, our City View Church worship team who leads us in worship. And just to let y'all know that are online, I know that you weren't there live um, on Saturday, or maybe you were, but Britt, um, as you know, has been our worship director and we have been contracting worship directors uh, for the last several months, but we have decided Britt is going to be our guy. And so we're so thankful for Britt and all that he brings to our team. And uh, we are very excited for our future here at the church to have Britt as our worship director. And he'll be leading us in some songs uh, after the conclusion of my message. But today, the very word Christmas, if you think about it, friends, has been emptied by its meaning, especially in our culture today. I mean, people nowadays are just trying to be so politically correct that they don't even say Merry Christmas anymore. They start saying words like Happy Holidays or Happy Winter Break or if you remember in that old Seinfeld episode back in the days, Happy, happy Festivus was the big thing. And Christmas, if we're not careful, can become so filled with hype. It can become so filled with anxiety that we or anyone can barely give it any attention to what Christmas is all about. And what is Christmas all about? It's all about Christ. It's all about Christ. And what is the real message of Christmas? It's all about the birth of, the, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Messiah and King. Now, maybe like our city and our state and our nation and world society is bracing for a very difficult Christmas season. Maybe you think Christmas won't be awesome this year because of the pandemic or the shutdowns or the lockdowns or all the things that are taking place for you and your loved ones like it's been in the past. And the primary message of Christmas uh, this, uh, for you and I, friends, is this simple phrase that we need to remember that God is with us. God is with us. Isaiah 7:14 tells us, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God is with us. Amen. I'm so thankful for that church. God will never be told to stay on the throne because of a pandemic. God will never socially distance from us. God will never say, don't come to me because you're not wearing a mask. And I'm not saying that those things are wrong at all, friends, but what I want you to understand is the bigger picture today, and that is God is with us. Nothing can ever cancel that out, amen? And this Christmas, we need to remember that. We also need to remember that because He is with us. He is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our worship. And, and because of that, singing and worship can never be canceled out either this Christmas or beyond. Now, the message of this glorious season is not about singing jingle bells or I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus, or, or even let it snow, which I don't know if that'll ever happen in San Diego. But the real message of Christmas should be, let us worship. Let us worship. That is what the angels did when they came to the shepherds. And we read about it in Luke 2, 8 through 18. It says, that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them and they were scared, they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Do, don't be afraid. I think we need to remember that word today, friends. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Verse 11, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth laying in a manger. Verse 13 is what I really want you to focus on. Suddenly, the angels were joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Verse 15, when the angel had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph and their was the baby lying in a manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day. 
Thank you for this opportunity to get into your word so that we can continue to go forward in our faith, that we can grow by learning what principles you have for us today. And may we continually worship you. May we continually sing songs of praise because those things will never be canceled out this Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. And you see, friends, when we read the story of what happened in Luke 2, 18 through 8, 8 through 18, this is what we should be doing. Because the true essence of worship is honoring Jesus for who he is and giving to him what is valuable to us. I want you to remember that, friends. The true essence of worship is honoring Jesus for who he is. We don't worship God based on how we feel. We worship God because of who he is, because of who Jesus is. And we want to give him what is valuable to us. Maybe it's our time. Maybe it's even our pride. But the most important thing is that we give God the very best. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. But this is why the wise men, this is what the wise men did when they came to see Jesus as well. We read about it in Matthew 2, 10 through 11. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I want you to understand, friends, that the Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. It says that a rock or tree will, will cry out and praise the Lord. So church, I want you and I to remember that, that, that the Lord deserves our worship. And if you and I choose not to worship Him, nature will worship Him, creation will worship Him, others will worship Him, but somebody is going to praise His name. You see, church, there's something powerful that happens when we worship the Lord, whether it's individually in our car, or even in our shower, or in our homes, or corporately with people in a Bible study, or in the church. And when we do those things, we usually sing, or, or in church we might shout at uh, acclamations of praise to God, or raise our hands, or dance, or clap, or stand, or kneel, or even prostrate. And this woman uh, that used to attend our church, she, she moved to a retirement place in East County, and she's a precious woman of God. And she wrote this poem, um, and uh, her name is Joyce Sessa. And her poem reminds us of what Christmas is all about. And it says this, and I quote, He left the realms of glory to come to this world below. He left his wealth and riches for this poor world of woe. He left the expanse of eternity to take the form of man. He left his father's presence and the age of grace began. He left his glorious kingdom to walk the streets with men. He left his home in heaven to raise us up again. He left all that he had ever had and came to a lowly stall. He came as a babe in a manger, salvation to bring to all. He came from the portals of heaven, the, sa the Savior of men to be, to taste death for everyone so our eyes the Father would see. A new covenant he established as prophets long foretold. He laid down his life for his sheep to gather them all in one fold. He came to give life in abundance, to open the eyes of the blind, to heal the brokenhearted and all strain, or strain ones to find. A new living way he opened that leads directly to God. He came, oh, wondrous story. Worship him, Jesus Christ the Lord. That is what we're supposed to do this Christmas. We're supposed to worship the living God. We're supposed to give him glory and praise for his goodness and his mercy. And as we get ready to wrap up today's message, there are three things to offer Christ this Christmas. The first thing that I want to encourage you to do, church, is like the Magi who gave, they gave Jesus gold. And that reminds me, like I said earlier, I want to encourage you this Christmas and beyond to give him your best. Give him your best worship. Go beyond. Maybe when it comes to singing or corporately gathering in a church, you, maybe you just stand and you just listen to the band or you listen to the person lead us in worship. I want to encourage you to sing. Or maybe you sing and maybe today you'll clap. Or maybe you clap and you sing and maybe you'll lift your hands in adoration and praise. But I want to encourage you, church, to give God your best when it comes to your worship. You see, there is always a cost when it comes to worshiping the king. There's a cost of sacrifice. There's the cost of fighting through your fatigue. Or your, there's the cost of, of obedience or the cost of laying down your pride. There's the cost of fighting through the fear of what others might think of you. But church, listen to me. Gold is not cheap. It's not cheap, it's expensive. And our worship should not be cheap. It should be the very best. Gold symbolizes royalty in scripture and, and as we bring Jesus, Jesus our best, we need to remember that he is worthy to be praised and adored. Oh, come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. 
Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and He is with us. I want to encourage you to, to give God your best today. And during this Christmas season and beyond, make a joyful noise to the Lord this Christmas. Christmas is all about worship, and nothing can cancel that out. Amen? The second thing I want to encourage you to do, like the Magi who gave Jesus myrrh. And I want you to understand that, to ponder what in you needs to die so that Jesus can live greater in you and through you. Why did I say what in us needs to die? Because myrrh was a spice given to someone who was going to die. You see, Jesus, while well, he was on this earth, he knew his secret ambition. His secret ambition was to give his life away. And today, or this week, or this month, what in you, what in me needs to die? Perhaps it's the cares of this world in your mind. Maybe it's the stresses of life. Maybe, maybe there's anger. Maybe there's a little bit of resentment in your heart. Or perhaps bitterness or jealousy or, or you struggle with lust or a hurt and wounded spirit of unforgiveness. Or maybe there's an addiction that you're dealing with today. If you feed those things, they will grow. But if you don't, they will eventually die and fade away like the morning fog. My question to you today, friends, is what in you needs to die? I want to encourage you to lay it at the altar and kill whatever needs to go in your life that is not pleasing to God and allow what the enemy meant for evil or even your flesh meant for harm and trust God to turn it around for good in your life as we choose to live and continue to live a life of praise and worship to the Lord God Almighty. Number three, no matter what comes your way, no matter what you experience in this thing called life, I want to encourage you to continually give God the glory. Give God the praise so you can experience His peace this Christmas and beyond. Christ paid the price for our sins, church. He offered us peace with God, but He didn't just give us any kind of peace. He gave us a peace that surpasses, sur sur surpasses all of our human understanding and it guards our hearts and our minds. You see, the kind of peace that God gives us is completely different from the kind of peace the world gives us. And His peace begins and continues as we worship Him, and we worship Him with our highest praise and our highest glory and our highest honor. Friends, don't cancel singing out. You've heard people say you can't sing in church. You can't sing in your home. You can't do certain things because of this pandemic. Singing will never stop. Worship will never stop this Christmas, especially worship to God, because there's something that happens when you and I begin to worship Him in spirit and in truth and in reality and love. And let me just tell you something. It is essential. It is essential that we worship the living God. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And I want to encourage you to do that today. I have a couple of questions to ask you before we enter in and we magnify and we come and adore Christ the King and give Him all the glory and all the praise. As every head is bowed and eyes are closed, and unless you're driving, don't do that. But how is your worship and praise tank today to God? Is it empty? Maybe it's in the middle, or is it extremely high? Are you giving God your best, or are you giving God a bunch of leftovers or excuses? Do you worship Him based on your feelings or your emotions, or do you worship Him because He's worthy to be praised and adored? Only you know the answer to those questions. And if there's an area of your life that you need God to fill you, or you need to repent of, of giving God leftovers or, or um, excuses, or you've been worshiping based on how you feel instead of who He is, just repent of those things right now. Cry out to God as we get ready to enter in. Put on that garment of praise and exchange for the spirit of heaviness and choose to lift your voice to God. Number two, what in your life needs to die today? Like I said earlier, maybe it's the cares of this world. Maybe there's something that is choking the word of God out of your heart, out of your mind. Maybe the stresses of life. Maybe there's anger or resentment or bitterness or jealousy or you struggle with an addiction or maybe you struggle with lust, or, or maybe you've been hurt and there's a hurt and wounded spirit in your life. Maybe, maybe there's unforgiveness. If you feed those things today, they're gonna continually grow and they're gonna choke out the passion to worship the living God. But if you, if you eventually just stop feeding it, it will die and it'll eventually fade away. Don't cancel out singing. Don't cancel out worshiping Christ this Christmas in your life. If the angels did it, if the wise men did it, we need to do it. We need to continually do it, not only now, but beyond. And so, Father, I pray for that individual, too, that may be watching, that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, and today is the day of salvation. 
or maybe the day of rededication where they, they want to put on that garment of praise. They want to receive that gift of salvation. They want to receive you not just as their Savior, but their Lord and Lord of all. And if that's you, just repeat this prayer with me. Just say, Jesus, forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe you died on that cross and you rose from the grave. And I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for this gift of salvation and for forgiving me of all of my sins. In Jesus' name. And so, Father, today, today, May we choose to worship you. May we choose to sing. And may the chains begin to fall in our lives because of who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, get ready to worship and worship him like you never have before. Give him your best. And as you give him your best, watch what he'll do in return. Then after worship, Monty will come and share some things that are happening in the life of the church that you need to know that are going on. And then I have a giving living moment as we only have two more Sundays in this year. And we're looking forward to what God's going to do as we close out 2020 and we head into 2021. Let's worship the King. God bless you.
chains are broken. In Him the sick are healed, and in the name of Jesus, giants are defeated. Every single mountain has to move. You're faithful to your promise. Finish what you started. There is none as powerful as you, Jesus. Jesus. We see the power of Him setting the captives free. We are the church. Jesus, you are 
Jesus. There's no greater name, no greater name. Oh. Uh... 
conquer our eyes, the Lord. of angels singing exaltation oh sing all the citizens of heaven above glory to God glory in the we just thank you for this season the season of Christmas God the season of Emmanuel when you came to earth as a child for us to love us to forgive us to set us free we are so thankful for you we are so thankful for Christmas in Jesus good name amen Hey, y'all, if you enjoyed today's service, please make sure to share it. If you haven't already, make sure to click that like button on Facebook by searching for City View SD. If your friends and family like the service, please encourage them to give us a like as well. You can also follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts by searching City View San Diego or by visiting our website and going to the messages page. Another option uh, for watching us is on YouTube. You can find us at youtube.com slash c slash cityviewchurchsd. If you're newer to City View, we'd love to connect with you. Just text the word welcome to 858-384-5811 so we can properly welcome you home. Everyone is invited to join us for our next service this coming Saturday at 5.30 p.m. If you can't make it to Saturday night service, you can always watch our service online starting at 9 a.m. on any one of our online pages. We also have Kids Church, and our preschool ministry is for ages 2 to 4, and our Kids Church is for kindergarten through 6th grade. Save the date for our United Family Christmas service on Saturday, December 19th at 5.30 p.m. at City View Church as all of our churches come together. And also save the date for our candlelight service on Thursday, December 24th at 5 p.m. We're gonna have tamales, kids games, and are you ready for this? Snow. If you need prayer, or if you gave your life to Christ today for the first time, or rededicated your life to Him, please email us at prayer at cityviewsd.com. Just email us or call the church at 858-560-1870 to let us know if you made the greatest decision of your life today. Just a quick reminder, there are three ways that you can continue to support God's church and the kingdom. The first is by giving online through our website, cityviewsd.com, and clicking Give Now. 
All the info you're going to need is right there on the giving page. Second, you can text to give at 858-780-5141. Lastly, you can do it the good old fashioned way and mail it into the church office at 8404 Phyllis Place, San Diego, California, 92123. Please make sure to put attention to the finance department. One last quick reminder that the last service to drop off your giving for 2020 will be Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on December 27th. Make sure to check out our website for the latest City View news. And here is Pastor Troy to close us out with a quick giving living moment. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 9, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all of your crops. Now in the Old Testament, believers did not come to the temple to worship without an offering to give God. Indeed, their offerings were integral or essential to their worship of God. Now we're no longer required to offer sheep or doves or grain, but we should still regard giving as a wonderful way to worship God, just like we did as we sang songs. When I think of all that God has given Teresa and I, we find that giving back to God is such a joyous blessing. When I think about this Christmas and all that God gave us through His Son, Jesus Christ, who eventually died on the cross to pay the penalty of my and your sins, and then after Jesus ascended to heaven, God also gave us His Holy Spirit to teach us, guide us, and comfort us. With all God has given us, how could we not give back to Him? So let me pray for you as we close out our online service today and as we give with enthusiasm today or this week of our tithe and missions offering. God bless you and thank you for joining us for church today and giving to the Lord and His church to advance His kingdom. Let me pray with you. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to not just to adore you in what we say, but to adore you in what we do. And that is through our tithe and our offerings, Lord Jesus. You have blessed us. You have provided for us, God. And Lord, may we in return give to you. Maybe it's been a while since we've given. Maybe we looked at our budget and thought, oh my gosh, we haven't tithed in a while. Lord, let this be a time where we catch up. Let this be a time where we make it a priority to not only worship you in song, but with our lifestyle when it comes to our giving. And Lord, in return, I pray that you would bless your people exceedingly abundantly, all that they could ask or even think of. Make ways where there seems to be no ways. Protect them, guide them, Lord, during this pandemic time, during these shutdowns, Lord, these are the times where we've got to take risk and trust you even greater as we give to you. And we pray that you would use this offering to advance your kingdom, Lord Jesus, not only in this city, this state, but this nation and this world through our missionaries and through all the things that we do here at City View Church. We thank you, God, that this city on a hill called City View is going forward in faith that people are being saved, delivered, and healed by the power of the Spirit of God. And we are reaching this city. People are being built, and they're becoming influencers for your kingdom. And we give you all the glory and the praise. Give us wisdom as we now use these funds, Lord God, to, to meet our needs and our budget and to finish the year in a positive way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.